Welcome everybody to another 2-1 release video. So in this video, I want to take a few minutes here to show you one of the new connectors available in 2-1, which is a, a webhook connector. Now we, we're finding this is commonly used in a few use cases, and sometimes you have a ERP system, for example, like SAP, a new uh, order comes in and you want to drive that order uh, information into your unified namespace. So SAP has the ability to detect a new work order and publish that out to an endpoint in this case, our webhook, we take that information in, maybe change the model around, and then publish it out via MQTT or Sparkplug into the UNS. That's one example. Uh, we have another example of a customer with uh, an autonomous vehicle system that will produce updates on the state of the vehicle uh, and then be able to publish those out to a REST endpoint, in this case, our webhook. We can consume that data, uh, remodel it, and then or change the model if needed, and then publish that up into, in that case, AWS to do some analysis on, on the vehicle. So all kinds of examples of maybe more uh, mature IT systems that are able to publish to a webhook, but we want to get that data back into the factory or up into the cloud uh, mixed with some factory data. So I've got one created, but it's, it's a, a new connection in 2.1, so you'll see it in the list under HTTP. It's a webhook. Uh, in this case, it has very minimal configuration. It just has the port on this system that it's going to listen on. It's important that that port, if uh, an external system is going to be publishing to the webhook, that port needs to be open. Uh, in this case, the default port is 9001, but you can change that. And then it has uh, inputs. So in this case, I have two inputs. And if I look at one, I have no filter, which means that anything published to this webhook will be captured by this input. We also have the ability to filter by, and you can chain these together, but in this case, I'm looking for an asset ID field to equal press one uh, to fill in this input. So I'm gonna save that, and to, to talk to this, in my case, I'm going to use Postmon. So I've got a Postmon client here, which is a REST client, which can publish to a REST endpoint. Uh, the webhook will accept post or put messages currently. So I'm going to go to localhost. This is on my machine, port 9001. And I'm just going to throw up some uh, some JSON there. So in this case, it's press one data. So I'm going to hit send. You'll see status code 200 came back, which meant the webhook was there and received the message. And now if I read this, you'll see that same message uh, appearing in the webhook. And if I change this to example, press two, oops, let's go back, press two. And hit read, you'll see this input won't update, again, because we're only filtering on press one messages. But if we go to the all input, which is accepting just the latest, you'll see that press two message came in. Uh, the other thing I'll show quick is it supports XML as well, right? Some older systems aren't gonna publish JSON, they'll publish XML, so we'll support that as well. So I'll just jump over to a tab quick where I have you know, a similar model in JSON format. And if I send that, uh, I jump back and read the all input. You'll see the model changes a little bit because XML is different, but the data the data is still there, and you can index into it. So now that that data is in Highbyte, right, you can tie it into a model, uh, run it through a flow. So what I can do is I have a boiler model over here. Let me just pull up the boiler one instance, and just you know, just like anything else, I can select the webhook as an input, expand you know the latest data, and pull in. The asset ID. Instead of taking it from OPC, I'll take it from the webhook now. Uh, looks right, and then I'll go in. Oops, looks like I don't have a flow. So I'll do that to rest, and I'll grab that instance, and I'll send it out. In this case, just to a, another site called webhook site. So I'm going to take a webhook to a webhook. Uh, just to demo this, and you'll see data will come out with the data coming from uh, from press one in this case but I can fill this data in with the webhook so uh, pretty cool right now this is there's no authentication here this is HTTP uh, in the future we will probably add authentication and make it HTTPS but you know really simple way to get you know some client that supports rest to be able to push that data into high byte again be able to mix it with other data sources and then push it out in other formats whether that be MQTT spark plug uh, rest again like I showed, OPC, uh, you name it. So that's the webhook. Uh, check it out. It's in a new feature in 2.1.